a few things. Let's let's start with uh, with really with Brexit. Uh, I'm here for the first time, uh, and um, since uh, Brexit passed, finally, it took them you know three years, and we finally got Brexit, and couldn't tell. You know, you walk around the streets in London, uh, it is packed with people, packed. It's February. This is not exactly tourist season. This is, I mean, it really is insane. The number of people that are in central London outside right now, late at night, Saturday night, but it's, it really is uh, hustling, bustling. There's excitement. There's, it, you know, it, it's, it, you know, I, I did business meetings. Everybody's excited. Uh, everybody is, is very, uh, uh, you know, forward looking. I, I think there's a real buzz. I think it's, I think it's, uh, I think it's very, and a very exciting time to be in the UK. It's a very exciting time for the UK. It, you know, don't believe all the press, don't believe all the panic, don't believe all the stuff. Uh, th there's real energy here, there's real excitement here. And, uh, and you can really, you know, you can really feel it. I don't think, I don't feel any different because it's breakfast, but there's no, there doesn't seem to be any downside, right? There doesn't seem to be a downside. The biz business, people are happy about Brexit. The Brits are happy. Most of the people out there are tourists. That's what's amazing to me is two things are happening. One is no Chinese tourists, and yet it's packed. Second, usually there are tons of Chinese. Second, it's, um, it's filled with tourists from all over the world. And it's February. It's cold. And it's going to rain tomorrow. Why are they all here? They are, They're, you know, and it just proved more proof that the world economy, in spite of all the problems and everything, people are rising up, people are getting richer, people can afford to travel, they can afford to come to places like the UK, they can afford to come and party here and shop here and, and do all that. And, uh, you know, you can you can feel it in the streets. Uh, it's again, it's it's exciting. The Brits are excited about Brexit. To some extent, they're excited about the fact that it's over, right? It, it, it dragged on the uncertainty. Nobody knew what was going to happen. Uh, so beyond whether you support Brexit or anti-Brexit, just getting it out of the way, just getting rid of the uncertainty was huge. So I think a lot of Brits are very positive about, okay, now we know. Now there's a lot of uncertainty about what kind of trade deal uh, Boris Johnson's going to negotiate with, with Europe. But that's kind of uncertainty. Okay, at least we know there's going to be we know we're done, and 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 now it's just a matter of negotiating the best deal we can negotiate. But before, nobody had a clue what the hell was going to happen, and and elections, and it, it, uncertainty is not good for markets. Uncertainty is not good for business. So generally, uh, businessmen have been uh, have been happy with just the resolution and the fact that we can now move on uh, with something else. Um, in terms of Brexit itself, I, I listened to a speech by Boris Johnson a few days ago where he gave a speech about trade and about his plans for trade. And it was a good speech. Now, he, he compromises a lot and he sells out a lot. So he talked about, uh, you know, saving the NHS. He talked about you know, minimum wages. He talked about spending money here and spending money there and, and doing all the status things that politicians do and all the, the, the maintaining power stuff that they need to do. But the stuff on trade was, you know, not perfect, but pretty damn good. So he talked about the benefits from trade. He talked about why free trade was important. He talked about potential trade deals uh, w with Africa, with the United States, with, with uh, Australia, Canada, and New Zealand. And ultimately, he talked about trying to establish a trade deal with, Can with, uh, with the European Union that was based, I think, smartly on the Canadian deal with the European Union, which is basically low tariff, free movement of goods without all the baggage, the regulatory baggage that, that, that the EU institutionalized. I think, I think the Europeans, or I think the Brits, are going to do fine, unfortunately, with imposing, with regulations. I don't think they need to add kind of the stuff coming out of the European Union. Uh, unfortunately, even Boris Johnson's government is going to overregulate in, in significant ways. People I know in the UK who are uh, connected politically are very positive 
about uh, the potential of this government, are very positive about everything, but, but we'll see. Uh, you know, so I think that the trade speech that he gave, so look up Boris Johnson free trade on YouTube is, is quite good. Uh, and, uh, I, you know, he's smart, he's well-educated, he's unbelievably articulate, articulate. The difference between him and, and Trump is, whoa, night and day. I would take Boris Johnson in a heartbeat over Donald Trump any day. And, uh, and I think he's going to get a lot done, not as much as I would want, not as much in the direction that I would want, but a lot is going to change here for the better. And I think, I think in terms of uh, in things, I think in, in terms of trade in particular, and trade is huge, right? Trade is huge. It's not just a marginal issue. Eh, you get it wrong, no big deal. Trade is a huge part of the global economy. It's a huge part of the quality and standard of living of your citizens. If you get trade right, you can get a lot of other things wrong and you still do okay. Uh, that's my argument, has been my argument for a long time about the US. Okay, let's, uh, all right. Uh, did you see Boris Johnson's speech on free trade? He quoted Smith and Ricardo. He said he wants UK to be beacon of free trade. I did, I started the show uh, today. You must have come in late talking about that speech. I thought it was, 60% really, really good stuff, 20% just okay and 20% terrible, but 60% is like better than pff, almost any politician, um, I I any politician speech these days. So, uh, so pretty good. Uh, and, uh, and in terms of beacon of free speech, uh, speaking out for free speech, it, yeah, I mean, we need a voice like that, particularly given the world is heading in the opposite direction. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual would be any man or woman who is willing to think, meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the role of the collectivist brute. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to iranbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com you're on Brooks show and um, and and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to keep this uh, to keep this going i'm not sure when the next